And we are live hey. on Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Dan Ward again here with my uh, little fun show. And um, I'm actually very honored today. I've got a very special guest with uh, Make-A-Wish. She is the president and CEO of Make-A-Wish North and Central Florida. I've known her since she ran a little office here in Orlando, and now she's grown to obviously bigger and better things, doing great things. Uh, and Cuba with, and I hope I said that right, with uh, Make-A-Wish. Yeah. How are you today? Good. Thanks, How are you? It's so good to be doing this with you. Yeah, it's awesome. It's good to see you. I know uh, I know we've had some, some delays because of the effects of the coronavirus. I know that our, uh, make sure I say it right, our Hamlin Association Wishmakers Ball put on by Fields Auto Group is delayed now until August, right? Yeah, so the 26th annual Hamlin and Associates Wishmakers Ball presented by Eric and Diane Home with oh, founding I sponsor. I was always <laughs> No, you're good. It's, it's, a long, it's a nice long title. We're so fortunate to have some so many amazing partners. But yeah, we unfortunately, because of COVID-19 and of course the safety of all of our um, participants and our guests, we um, were, were supposed to have it last weekend, this past Saturday. So hopefully people got their champagne glasses and did a toast this past Saturday, but we will do it again. It's rescheduled for Saturday, August 22nd. And we're just so fortunate to have so many amazing partners, Hamlin and Associates, Eric and Diane Home, Fields Auto Group, Arnold Palmer Hospital for Children, um, Acme Glass, um, Kendrick. Kendrick Law Group. Um, yeah, I'm so sad. I keep partners. getting the memories popping up right now from last year and two years ago and three and four and five and six and seven. <laughs> I keep popping up on my Facebook. I'm like, oh, today I'd be in a Sunday. We would have been in the pool relaxing. I know. Well, you could have put your tux on or something. For yeah, I just walked around the house, right? <laughs> That's I know. Awesome. We were so a few things. I, I know that as far as the Hamlin Associate Wishmakers Ball, since we're right there, I know that I know that you're having some effects granting wishes right now, and I know we'll get into that. But as far yeah. as that, so have we completely sold out the tables? Have we completely sold out auction items? Have we completely do we have everything we need? Do we still need to make asks for for anything uh, to anybody out there? Yeah, so we have an awesome silent auction. So always accepting auction items um, for for the event, and we also have a couple tables tables left to sell that we can that we can fit in there. So there's definitely if anyone's interested, there's definitely some more opportunities to participate. Um, it's our signature gala event of the year, and um, our committee has done an amazing job putting it together this year. So we cannot wait. COVID-19 will not stop us. We cannot wait to put it on eventually. Um, but yes, if anyone's interested in participating in whatever way, um, we have opportunities available, whether that's volunteering that day or whether it's donating an auction item or being a guest at the event, we have opportunities for people to, to be there and support me. Absolutely, and if you have never been, please experience it. Once you experience it once, um, you'll wanna be back all the time. Not only is it one of the best parties Orlando puts on, it is also, one, it is also the best benefit. It's been voted the best in Central Florida. Um, I remember six or seven years ago when I started volunteering with you guys, we were just hoping to get $400,000. And now last year was what, 1.5 or 1.25 or, uh, I mean. Record breaking, record breaking. Yeah, and so, Dan, I was gonna give you a shout out because you've been um, a volunteer with us for so many years. We were kind of chatting about it beforehand, but Dan volunteered with us back in the day, 2013, 2014, and it's Volunteer Appreciation Week this week. so. Thank you, my friend, for everything that yeah. you've done for our organization. Um, sure. You know, you've helped us grow it and you've always helped with the auction. I actually think you're wearing one of our items <laughs> that we put in the auction, St. Pete Brewing Company. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> they've, donated, yeah. they've donated before <laughs> your yeah, contact every there. Year they, uh, every year they give a little package and they've got, um, they do like a beer and they host someone back in the room. And sometimes it always gets sold. Uh, whether they show up and, and do the whole walkthrough, they like to come and drink, but yeah. <laughs> it always gets moved and, and that's <laughs> incredible. So much fun. 
yeah, go. If you if you haven't gone, go. The after party, tremendous. So so obviously we're in the midst of this COVID-19 situation. I'm sure that wishes are being affected because obviously, especially here in South in Central Florida, we we always do a big Disney thing and the SeaWorld and Legoland and the the Orlando Magic and all those big events that are outdoors, the um, uh, the Dr. Phillips Center. So obviously those are places that are shut now. So airplanes to get people to and from. Uh, so talk a little bit about that. What have you guys done to adjust or pivot or are you still being able to grant some wishes? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely impacted us as an organization. Um, in total, we have 527 children who are in our pipeline currently waiting for a wish. And we had scheduled in March and April, we had scheduled about 30 to 40 wishes to grant. And unfortunately, because of the COVID-19 impacts, we've had to put um, about 30 wishes a month on hold um, due to they were travel related, they were um, theme park related, they fell into some of those restriction areas. So unfortunately, we're having to put those on hold for right now, um, but we will get to them. We will get to them when we can. And um, we are still doing wishes. So we, our team is working remote. They're doing an amazing job. So everyone's working really hard to get the wishes that we can get done done. And so we are doing online shopping sprees. So those have moved to, instead of the store, we're sending packages to, to the family's house. We just did one last week of um, an 11 year old boy. So that's really cool. Um, we finished a gaming computer wish um, that happened that everything got set up. Um, shout out to Adam Losey um, for helping with that one. Adam's one of our board members. And yeah, so we have a room redo that we're getting ready to finish. Um, again, we had items shipped to the family's house. We have pool wishes that, um, or play sets wishes that are, are kind of being constructed right now. So although we have limitations, there are ways that our team is being very creative to get our wishes accomplished and get as many as we can that have been waiting, be able to get those done. Um, I actually have a, a great story because we had the WWE with the WrestleMania was a, one of our top wishes. And we had a little boy who wanted to go there. Um, but of, unfortunately, because it was moved to an audience only event, um, he of course could not attend. Um, but one of our wish coordinators came up with the idea, well, what if he had a watch party at home? And so instead of us being able to send him to WrestleMania, we sent a, an iPad to the family's home. We sent a DoorDash gift card so that they could get a meal catered in um, because the wish child wanted to watch on his iPad on his bed. So, and then we had WWE merchandise sent to the family's home. Um, so although it, we had to be a little creative, um, we were able to grant his wish and he was able to watch WrestleMania in the comfort of his bed on his very own iPad. And um, the family had an, a fun catered watch party for, for the, for the event. So I'm surprised wishes. John Cena didn't show up. As, <laughs> right. As awesome yeah, I know. And amazing as he is with Make-A-Wish. I know John and John is one of our, he's our top wish granter, celebrity wish granter. So he's done so many wishes for us. And, you know, it's just a testament to where there's a wish, there's a way. And we will get to those wishes that have been placed on hold um, at some point when we can, when it's safe to do so. Um, Cause obviously the safety of our children is the number one concern of our organization. Um, but wishes that we have that can get granted, we're doing. And so I'm really proud of the team. They're doing an amazing job. And we're, we're getting them out there. And in the meantime, we've been sending messages of hope to the kids that are waiting. And so some of the audience out there may have seen some posts on social media, but that's an easy way for people to be able to send a message to our wish kids and give them hope um, during this time of the, of the anticipation and waiting for their wish to be granted. They can record a message of themselves and post it on social media, tag a couple of friends, hashtag wishes are waiting. Um, we've had many celebrities do it. Ryan Reynolds actually did a, a really neat one. Um, we've had, ugh, I'm blanking on some of the others, but we, are, we as a staff did it. And we also wrote nice messages to all of our wish kids who are waiting. So oh, awesome. we're finding ways to keep them engaged. Yeah, I know, and you're doing the message of hope. So how about I know, obviously I know from being involved with you guys, <clears throat> there's a lot of events that lead up to the big event, right? So the Wishmakers Ball is like the granddaddy, right? But there's all these small events that lead up to it that help, that help 
collect the amount of money to make these wishes. So how have you had to shift or pivot with those events? Are you doing them virtually now? Are you offering, you know, like are people walking around their house in heels so that they can? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm, you know, we're, we're keeping the audience engaged. We actually were scheduled to have, you know, we cover central and Northern Florida. So we go all the way up to the Panhandle and we have offices in Jacksonville. So we were scheduled to have a, an event there in the middle of March or the end of March, I should say. And so we obviously weren't able to do that event. It's, it's a um, brewery and restaurant tasting. So we shifted and um, we worked with Tasty Trivia, who is a small business trivia company and they're not able to do trivia events in bars right now or restaurants and so we worked in collaboration with them to have a trivia event in place of um our postponed event that was supposed to happen in Jacksonville and so we had like an all-day trivia event and we did the auction online um kind of like a mini auction and then we had prizes throughout the day and so we raised the money for that and it was just a fun way to get everyone involved and engaged. And we didn't charge for the trivia or anything like that. It was just a fun participation oh, thing. Awesome. And then we're doing um, trivia every Wednesday night in April on our Facebook page. Um, to and we can put a, you know, when we're, when we're done here, if, you, if you'd like to put like a link or an information in the comments so that people can get into that and help. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you too, because I know, um, I know, obviously, Jessica and Mr. Hamlin. Yeah. And shout out and to Greg Jess Cardone. Kendrick. How, um, how, how important have those three people been to the success of Make a Wish North and Central Florida? So, Grant Cardone, John Hamlin, and of course, yeah. Jessica Kendrick. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jess Kendrick is um, our co chair this year and has chaired the event for the last, gosh, I think it's three years now or four years. It seems like it's been so, so long and forever. It seems like she's been a part of our Make Wish family for forever now. And so um, she's helped grow the events, her along with the committee, and Jay Chaudhary is, is co chairing the committee this year, too. Um, they've just been instrumental to the success of the organization and, and growing. Um, the gala and bringing in, you know, different contacts into the event so that they could see what, you know, what we're trying to do in, in the community and grant wishes for kids with critical illnesses. And John Hamlin um, has been a Make-A-Wish member, family member for years now um, and has been such a huge supporter. I mean, John is just, has the biggest heart and will gladly raise his hand at any opportunity to help support kids. You know, his heart's really in it and he just wants to make a difference in the lives of, of children. And, you know, sick children are the most vulnerable in our communities. They don't ask for this, they don't wish for this. And, and so to have supporters like that who really understand and um, feel for the kids and it, their hearts are in it, um, is just so amazing. And we were able to go to, you mentioned Grant Cardone. Um, they just had the 10X Growth Conference at the end of February. And so our chapter, Make Wish Central Northern Florida was a beneficiary of that 10X Growth Conference event. And um, that was you know through John and Grant Cardone making that happen. And we raised over $100,000 at that event to benefit Wishmakers Ball. And so, wow. um, you know, we're, we don't receive government funding. We don't receive government grants. And so, we rely 100% on the local public support. So whether it's local businesses, um, individuals in the community. And so people like the ones just mentioned um, and all of our supporters and sponsors out there, we couldn't do it without their support. And you know, our volunteers and our board of directors and our sponsors, it's not just um, a business thing for them. It's they really care about the kids and care about the mission and care about bringing hope and strength and joy to these children's lives. And so we could not be more thankful for that. Absolutely. And then of course, uh, the, the most important person is the addition of Krista to make a wish like three or four years ago. Remember, we, yeah. we'd, we'd yeah. have somebody, they'd go away. We'd have somebody to go away. Yeah. And then we, got, we got Krista and just over the last three or four years, what a stable, awesome, just exciting person to have involved. And she's just been amazing, hasn't she? Yeah, Chris Segalis, shout out to her as well. So she's our, our director of development in the Orlando office. And she actually just had the sweetest little baby, Cameron. Um, so she's 
um, doing really well and at home with three kids right now with everything, oh. all the distance learning that's going on. Um, but she's, you know, I'm an awesome two, person. I, I cannot be. <laughs> I know. So, I mean, she's incredible and um, has worked so well with the committee and just so uh, as part of our team. And, you know, shout out to all, you know, all the staff at Make-A-Wish for everything that they do on a daily basis. You know, I'm privileged and honored to be able to lead um, the team, but it's, you're only as good as the team behind you, you know, and, and or with you, I shouldn't say behind you, with you. And, you know, the team that we have at Make-A-Wish are um, they put their hearts and souls and everything into their jobs to be able to make a difference in the lives of children. And they're, they're amazing. They're, they're, they're such, they're so great yeah, to work I, with. It makes it so fun. I, and, and we miss each other so much because everyone's working remote. So we're, we're seeing each other on the little screen, but we can't wait so that we can be together again. Well, you've built quite an awesome group there. I mean, obviously there's a, there's a core of the committee that have been together for a long time that are amazing and then it's grown to now Jay. Uh, I reached out to him, I was like, send me tacos. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're trying to see if we can get uh, Gringo Loco help them out on here. Um, but oh, good. yeah, they're awesome. Man, yeah, I mean, obviously Make-A-Wish, everything they do is just absolutely incredible. The, the group that you've put together and what you've done in Central and Northern Florida is awesome. From, from your little office in Maitland to now, running the whole from Orlando up and uh, the sky's the limit obviously for you. One day you'll be running the whole thing, I hope. So <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm just really <laughs> privileged to, you know, <laughs> I'm just really thankful to be, um, be able to be in a position where I can lead the group going forward. And I couldn't do it, like I said, without the team or without our incredible volunteers and, and amazing supporters. And um, it's just, a, you know, our wish kids, you know, we were talking about the impact that this, the COVID-19 has made and, you know, our wish kids are so resilient, you know, kids are the most resilient, I feel like of, of all of us. And they are, especially if they, when they are diagnosed with a critical illness, um, they're, kids who are used to being in isolation. A lot of times they have to be in isolation because they're about to get a bone marrow transplant or you know they're immune deficient. And so they have to, they can't play with other kids or they can't play sports. And so this isn't necessarily very different for them. And so I think that just shines a light on the resiliency of our kids and how important it is about what Make-A-Wish does. Because Make-A-Wish is there to give kids who have been diagnosed with a critical illness um, we're there to give them step in when they're going through all their medical treatments and hospital visits and doctor's visits um, and step in and give them that hope and that strength and that joy that will hopefully, you know, bring a smile to their face. And what we found from medical professionals, um, we have our awesome Dr. Shoba Shrikantan, who's our chair of the board and who's also our medical advisor and on the national advisory board um, council. She um, and other doctors have spoken about the impact that a wish can have on a child's physical condition and how important um, that is to their healing process. And of course, medicine is very important, but make a wish is there for that healing power as well. And that, that positivity that's so important to kids you know, moving on and, and being able to get through there. And it's, it's, it's awesome to see, obviously a lot of people think, okay, make a wish, okay, the kids are unfortunately dying or will end up there, right? However, it's not the case with a lot of these children and it's, and it's amazing because we don't want that to be the case, right? We're trying to, right. to and two things. When you meet the children or you go to the hospitals or you go to the cancer facilities, these kids don't know, they don't even care. They don't even, you know, they got a bald head and a mask on, but they think they're just, life is amazing. It's the, the parents obviously are the ones like, oh, but the kids are running around like just incredible. And then to see them become adults and speak at your events and say the impact that it's had on them is incredible to, to be like, wow, I, I think that trip to the Bahamas made me keep fighting and they found a cure for me. And, and now I'm alive and well, and I have my own children and family and, and business and I'm giving back. And just to hear those stories when you're sitting in the room, I tell people when we invite them to, um, to our table, like 
look, you're going to have a, an amazing amount of emotional <laughs> things happen to you in this room because you're going to go from the highest of highs to the lowest to lows to dinner time, right? And yeah. it's, it's just to the after party, right? So uh, just to, to the people that come in the room and talk about their children or themselves or what it meant to move to Orlando or what it meant for, you know, a fireman. Something as silly as like a fireman showing up at your house saying, hey, want to pull the bell on the fire hydrant? And that kid just said, wow, that made my whole, you know, not all these kids are asking for a trip to Dubai. You know, they're all, I mean, some of these kids are like, hey, can, I just want my room painted yellow and I want a, and I, and I want a yellow teddy bear. Like, and that yeah. makes a difference. So it's just to see those stories and hear them and, and watch them is, just to hear what it's done. I mean, it's incredible. And to, to, to understand Make-A-Wish from that, that one wish of that little boy that got to be a policeman to what it is today is just insane. Yeah, um, you bring up such a good point, Dan, that I you know, <clears throat> love to talk about because there's a common misconception about Make-A-Wish that we're um, for, we grant wishes for terminally ill children. And um, to your point, that's, that's not necessarily the case. About 80% of our kids go on to lead healthy lives. And we believe that the wish experience is a huge part of that process. And that's why doctors say that Make-A-Wish is something that they actually feel like they prescribe in the treatment process. And they prescribe to, to children who, who do have a critical illness because it helps them fight for their lives and it helps them um, with that hope. And hope is so important. I mean, it's one of the key pieces of humanity, right? Is having that hope for something better. And so um, that's what Make-A-Wish's prescription is for these kids and, and for the families, you know, to your point, it's not the children are so resilient. And um, sometimes when, a child is diagnosed, like it can tear the family apart because all of a sudden, you know, the parents have to figure out, well, who's going to stay home with a child? What do we do with the siblings? You know, how, how do we take time off work? How do is we it our fault? Take they take, they take a oh, personal, for sure. like for sure. I mean, of us. did we do, what did we do to cause this? And, and there's so much mental anguish and just to get right. Them and, yeah. And so make a wish includes the family on the wish. And so that's, you know, um, siblings who live in the household that are under the age of 18, you know, everyone's included in that, in that wish. And so we cover the, all the costs. So if it's a wish to go to see snow, for instance, we're going to cover airfare, accommodation, souvenir money, activity money, everything. So the whole family doesn't have to worry about it. And we find that it ends up being this healing process, not only for the wish child, but for the entire family. And that's such a strong piece of it because the whole family is going through it. You know, the siblings are also wondering, sometimes the kids are really young and they, they don't know what's going on. And so to give them this light in the darkness that's happening is, is really the purpose and um you know and, Bill, and you guys will get in there from from the days when dan fields and john mantioni were heavily involved to the transition to hamlin and to the and obviously fields is still involved but now because yeah. they have the jacksonville platform they've kind of split both platforms so fields is still heavily involved as much yeah as well. they're they're our founding sponsors now um to hamlin to cardone they they have private planes folks and i've seen them stand up in the room and offer their private plane on multiple occasions to get these kids where they need to go to get them transportation they have boats they have people all over this country that have access to places to stay so this whole group that they have together they'll they'll find a way to to, to make this wish happen um i mean i've seen i've seen the wwe belt come in i've seen them take kids all over the <laughs> yeah. world and, um, yeah, and you know, you were talking about, Dan, you were talking about the fact that it's, you know, the, a simple wish was like a police officer, for instance, and you're right, the wishes are, it's the heartfelt wish of the child. And so we recently granted a, a wish for um, Gage, who wanted to be a robot superhero. You might have seen some <laughs> of the coverage that that occurred in Orlando and, and other places because the story went nationwide. Um, but Gage wanted to be a robot superhero and he wanted to save people and he wanted to save Orlando. And he did. He saved someone from a burning building. Um, the or whole Orlando um, Sheriff's Department was involved in that, you know, so that's the beauty and the magic of Make-A-Wish. And it's not just a trip if, it's, if it ends up being something where the child wants to travel. 
we put the Make-A-Wish magic on it and um, provide that personalized, customized experience for that child so that they'll remember it for, for years. And, you know, and if sadly, you know, there are cases, of course, where the child is really sick and, um, and unfortunately, if they do pass away, then what we lean on um, at Make-A-Wish is that their family now has those memories to look back upon, um, those happy memories in the midst of all that other darkness of treatment schedules and, and hospital visits and, and stays and all that, um, they have the wish to, to look back upon, so. And it allows them to dream. I know before we go, um, it allows them to dream. A, a lot of these kids have, they're being told certain things, but they have a dream. I wanna be a police officer or I wanna, I want to work as Mickey Mouse at Disney, or I want to go be a lifeguard. They have that dream. And then to have their wish fulfilled to go see whether it's the Carolina Panthers one where the kid got to meet his favorite quarterback or whatever. Now they have a dream. So that keeps them fighting for their life because they say, you know, I'm going to wear that badge one day, or I'm going to wear that helmet one day, or I'm going to have the Mickey hat on and I'm going to welcome guests. And I, I want to be there too, so kids can have the same experience I had. And it allows a lot of them to keep fighting and just accomplish that goal. And it allows parents to to try their hardest. And it's not it's it's not easy as a parent going through that situation, but to try their hardest to make sure that they're there fighting with them to get them to that common goal. And it's just and anywhere I've asked for other foundations, right? But whenever you ask for make a wish, it's it's give, I mean, if I say I'm, I'm asking for this, 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 or I'm asking for Make-A-Wish, Make-A-Wish is, is a staple. They know, okay, that's really going to somebody and, and they're going to help somebody. It's, it's not a hoax and it's not. It's, I mean, it's unbelievable what, what you guys do over there. Uh, I love it. I, I miss being in the meetings and stuff, but I think with my new transition in life, I'll be able to free up my time and get out there more. And uh, just to you, the committee, to, to Jessica and Hamlin and Cardone in the fields and Krista and everybody who's involved on that committee. Uh, thank you for what you do. You guys are awesome, amazing. I've seen you guys grow from this guy that you were just asking for some memorabilia from to being a, a part of it. And um, I'm appreciative of it. Well, Dan, thank you. And thank you to your wife, Cynthia. And, um, you know, Lake Nona, I associates, you guys do a table every year and have been such longtime supporters of us from a volunteer, volunteer standpoint, from also a donor standpoint. So thank you for all your support. And I was going to shout out Missy Regal too, because Missy's been yes. um, design and decor chairperson for, gosh, I think like 10 years now. And she steps up every single year and does an amazing job. And so um, she's just the brightest bubble of person ever. And so, yeah, I, everybody on the committee, you know, there's so many people to thank out there for supporting Make-A-Wish. And I think, you know, the, yeah, we could go through a ton of, of names, right? But yeah. yeah, sorry, Missy, I should have mentioned your name. I, I do love you. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> but yeah, no, thanks, Dan, for giving us this platform to talk a little bit more about Make-A-Wish. And, you know, if anyone's interested in hearing a little bit more, they can go to our website. It's um, cnfl.wish.org. Um, I'll post that on the comments. Um, but we also have, as I mentioned, a campaign going on right now called Messages of Hope where you can send a message to a wish child who's currently waiting for their wish to be granted. And we just appreciate everyone's support. And um, yeah, it's all about, yeah, it's all let's about. Do it, um, let's do it anytime. If you have events coming up or when we get closer to Wishmakers Ball or yeah. I mean, you, how cool would it be to, for me to be live at the ball? I'm going to go live at the ball guys. This year it's <laughs> happening August 20. 22nd. 22nd. I, I always remember April because we're always in April. August 20th. I'm going to do it. I'm going live. We're going to have wish kids there. We're going to have auctions going on. We're going to have so much fun. Thank you. I appreciate you. It's so good to see you. Thanks so much, Dan. It's so great talking to you. I'll see yes, you later. Man. And I'll get Bye. you a copy of this once I pull it off. Okay.